Okay, I can feel it in my hands. And in my hands. Yes, yes, yes. Ooh. All right. Yes, there is a word from the Lord this morning. We will be coming from Genesis chapter 45. Okay. And then after that, we're going to jump over to chapter 50. Amen. Amen. Chapter 45, the book of Genesis. These are the words of our Lord and Savior. Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them who stood by him. And he cried, cause every man to go out from me. And there stood no man with him while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard. And Joseph said unto the brethren, I am Joseph. Does my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near. And he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom ye sold into Egypt. Now, therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves, that ye sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in their which there shall neither be earring nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve your posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you that sent me hither, yeah. but God. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and the ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Jumping over to uh, chapter 50, uh, yes, 50. We're going we're gonna to start, mm, we'll start at 15. Verse 15. Amen. Amen. And, and when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will preadventure hate us and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall ye, so shall ye unto, unto Joseph forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin. For they did unto them, they, they did unto evil, the evil. I'm sorry. And now we pray thee forgiveness, thy trespass of the servants of God, of thy father. And Joseph wept when he spake unto him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for I am in the place of God. But as for you, ye thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day Amen. to save much people alive. Amen. That is the word Amen. of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I say again, there is a word from the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I've done all that you've asked of me. I stand here in my imperfection and ask you to cover me in the blood, to please hide me behind the cross. Let me speak with power and conviction. Please, Lord, let these words not come back to you void. Let every ear be bent. Let every life be changed by this word, including myself. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. glasses. I've been trying to, trying to put it off that way for a while. <laughs> amen. Amen. Just a quick thought. Sooner or later, we all going to have to find out what's going to happen when
when we leave here and go home. And sooner or later we're going to run up on Jesus and I believe in my heart he's going to ask us for that. We've done with our lives since we've been here. Yeah. Have we honored him? Have we done everything we're supposed to do? I just thank God for Dr. Gray. I thank God that I heard your voice in the darkness. Because I still can't believe I'm here. The title of this sermon is called, What Are You Looking At? What are you looking at? For a child of God, it's not what you go through. It's how you go through it. Amen. It's the life you live outside the routines of the church. It's not what you see, but how you see it. It's not what you're looking at. It's your outlook on what you see. Lord Jesus. It's how you handle what you can't control. It's how you play the hand life dealt you. It's how you respond to what you didn't choose. It's not what life throws at you. It's how you catch it. Mm -hmm. It's your reaction to the things of life that were not your choice. Yes. You let your struggle make you stronger. Mm -hmm. You let your struggle make you stronger. Amen. You must look at the pain as a prelude to your power. Mm -hmm. When hell is kicking your butt, you see, you see that it's proof that you're connected to heaven. Being forsaken by family and friends gives you the assurance that you're walking with the Lord. Mm -hmm. The tears of suffering you shed all through the night helps you to believe that there's joy in the morning. Amen. Amen. It's not what we go through, it's how we go through it. Amen. The saint and the sinner don't live in a different world, but they see the, the, they see the same world in a different way. Amen. We do the same things, and yet we do things in different ways. The same things that make us cry are the same things that won't allow us to be looking for pity. We face the same trouble, but we know trouble don't last always. Amen. We bear the same burdens, but we believe that God won't put on us more than we can bear. Amen. Life for us is not free from pain, but we all know no pain, no gain. When life presents itself good or bad, it's how you interpret what your eyes have seen in this presentation. Amen. Life presents itself in many ways. We know that our outlook is giving you power over what you're looking at. How you see it can change what you see. Your attitude can affect your altitude. Amen. Your state of mind, your state of mind can have an effect on your reality. Amen. Positive thoughts can overturn negative vibes. Amen. Trusting in the divine can give you power over the demonic. Yes. Your perception can alter your pain. Amen. Your view of trouble can transform your trouble. Amen. Your interpretation can alter your encounter. Oh, I can stop by to tell you the book of Genesis and the scriptures of Joseph cry out to us, what are you looking at? Yes. Lord Jesus. In the text, Joseph reaches into our hearts and minds with his story, and he asks us, what are we looking at? Mm -hmm. How you approach life determines how much trouble can trouble you. Yes. Yes. I don't think you've heard that. I don't think you heard that. How you approach life determines how much trouble can trouble you. Mm -hmm. I've come to the realization that what we label good and what we label bad has more to do with our perception than our reality. Some people see the light at the end of the tunnel, no matter how dark it gets. And some people only see darkness even at high noon. Some people always looking for an opportunity, and some people always complaining about obstacles. People can look at the same thing and not see it the same way. And how you see a thing says more about you than the thing you see. Y'all ain't ready for this. Y'all ain't ready for this morning. Joseph cries out to our souls, what are you looking at? Mm -hmm. Learn from my life. How you describe stuff tells us something about you. It ain't what you're looking at, but how you visualize it. 
what we have in the text. What we have in the text is a creature that rose from the dust, who views life through the eyes of divinity. He doesn't write about his troubles. He believes God used his troubles. Rather than cry about what he went through, he focuses on how he got over. He doesn't hate his brothers that tried to dust him off. He celebrates a God who can make wrong things right. He didn't get hung up on what the brothers tried to do. He talks about what the Lord has done. He takes a life full of negatives and turns out positive. He thinks everything was done. He, he thinks everything that was done to him was done for him. Everything that was supposed to stop him is the same thing that helped him. As he looks back on what he went through, all he can see is how he got over. All he can see is how he got over. Lord Jesus, <clears throat> that was a lion. Joseph has a positive outlook on all his problems. He sees the blessings in his burden. He sees his pitfalls were really pit stops. Joseph has a positive outlook on all his problems. He believes that God recycled his pain into power, transformed his trouble into triumph. Help me, Lord Jesus. Joseph cries out. Joseph cries out. Look, what are you looking at? Let me tell you, you don't need better vision. You need a better outlook. Your problem is not, it's not a little fact. It's too little facts. It's too little faith. You don't need more information. You need more trust in the Almighty. Amen. It's not poor vision. It's poor outlook. Yes. Lord Jesus, Jesus check Lord. check this out. This this is this is when I read this, it, it just it manifested itself. The brothers know they did Joseph wrong, but Joseph believes they helped him do God's will. The brothers feel guilty about trying to destroy him. Joseph is grateful for how God used him. The brothers are ashamed of what they did, but Joseph is amazed that God's deeds helped him to carry out God's plan. The brothers are afraid that Joseph might retaliate. Joseph is grateful that the Lord worked through him. Amen. It's not your vision, it's your interpretation of what you see. Now in the text, Lord Jesus. Now in the text, Joseph is not talking about what he's going through. Joseph is talking about what he went through. These are not the words of Joseph who was in prison. These are the words of a Joseph who is now on the throne. This is not a declaration of faith. This is an interpretation of history. Check your books, check your Bibles. Now that he's on the other side of pain, he's able to look back and see God's power. Yes. Now that he's made it over, he realizes how he got over. Yes. Now that he has survived being helpless, he knows where his help comes from. Amen. Lord Jesus. Now that he's been elevated, he has a different view of his humiliation. Amen. Now that he's been elevated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that he's been elevated. As I know you've been elevated, but if you trust the Lord, you've been elevated. And you have a different view of your humiliation. Yes, yes, yes. Everything you've gone through in life, every time you've been told no, every time somebody walked away from you, been denied a job. Y'all know trying to hear this morning. Y'all not trying to hear this morning? Lord Jesus. If God brought you through, you shouldn't have to whine about what you went through. If you survived it, you shouldn't be crying about it. Why are you going to have a pity party and you survived the terrifying ordeal? Why would you continue to continue hating your enemies when God exalted you above those who did you wrong? Why would you be upset about yesterday that's gone when God's already placed you where no one can stop you? Why are you crying about what you went through when you already made it through? Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. When I look back, when I look back, it ought to help influence what you went through. Yes. Come on now. If you went through it, you ought to be able to see how you went through it. Yes. Come on now. If you survived demons and negative people all up in your business, you ought to be able to look back and see God was on your side. Yes. If you survived people who betrayed you, you ought to be able to see the Lord never left you. If, you. if you've been caught between a rock and a hard place, Lord Jesus, you ought to be able to see that God made a way out of nowhere. Lord Jesus. If you made it, if you made it, it ought to affect how you see it. Yeah. Lord Jesus. Let me go have fun now. I'm going to 
continue underneath the scripture. We're going underneath the scripture. Yes, yes, yes. It's time. Check this out. I, I, I know Deacon Moore will like this part. Check this out. Joseph may have had questions when he was going through, but now Joseph has the answer. Now that he's going through, Joseph understands that he has some grief in the pit, but now Joseph has gratitude while in the palace. Joseph is not stuck on what he went through. Joseph is celebrating the fact that he made it through. See, Joseph has moved from once upon a time to happily ever after. Joseph can say, once upon a time I was betrayed. Once upon a time I was abandoned. Once upon a time I was despised. Once upon a time I was hated. Once upon a time I dwelled in a pit. Once upon a time I spent time in prison. But Joseph ain't hung up on once upon a time. That's how he got to happen Y'all not trying to get this morning. Y'all not trying to get this morning. Some of us are stuck. Some of us are stuck on once upon a time. Yeah. We can't see what the Lord has done because we're stuck on what somebody did to us. Amen. We can't see that the Lord has brought us through because we still hung up on what we went through. We don't even realize. We don't even realize that we are happily ever after. Amen. Lord Jesus. Because we're stuck on once upon a time. Lord Jesus, we open wounds that the Lord has already healed. We, we fight the battles that the Lord has already won. We fret the enemies that, that have already been whipped. Some of us are stuck on once upon a time. Once upon a time, I was abused. Once upon a time, I was forgotten. Once upon a time, I did it wrong. Somebody did wrong to me. Sometimes, I just don't know. Somebody took advantage of me. Somebody overlooked me. If you've been stuck on once upon a time, I stand here in the house of God and tell you, the Lord said, get over it. Get over it. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. We stuck. We stuck. That's right. Hallelujah. Forgive me, Lord. We stuck on once upon a time. But a child of God ought to move from once upon a time to happily ever after. You ought to move from going through to I went through. That's right. And when you get to it, and when you get to I gone through, it changes how you see what you went through. And it affects what you're going through. Yeah. Now that I have insight on what I went through, I now have greater hope for what I'm going through. Amen. Now that I have survived being attacked by enemies, now I believe that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Now that I've seen that trouble don't last always, I find it easy to believe that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Lord Jesus, now that I have survived in the starving land, I can't help but believe that the righteous will never forsake me. Lord Jesus, and the sea will never beg bread. Yeah. Lord Jesus, now that I've gone through, I've got a different perspective on what I went through. Joseph looks back. Joseph looks back. So do I. Lord Jesus, I look back too. I wasn't perfect. And, and Joseph looks back on what he went through. And now Joseph believes God brought him through. Amen. Now that he's on the other side of pain, he sees that the power of God was working in pain. Amen. Now that he's out of trouble, he sees how God was working in the trouble. Yes. Y'all are not trying to hear this morning. Now that he's been lifted, he sees that God was there even when he was down. All the time. Joseph realizes he looks back that a strong God can work in silence. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. God can move and not be heard. God can be doing something and never make a sound. Mm -hmm. God doesn't have to be loud to be real. That's right. Lord Jesus, God doesn't have to have drama to be decisive. God doesn't always use the thunder. God can be a still, small voice. Right. Joseph can tell you that a strong God can move in silence. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, ooh, now that, ooh. Glory. And now, check this out. In the scriptures, we hear from everybody but God. Y'all ain't ready for this. In the scriptures, we hear from everybody but God. In the story of Joseph, everybody's talking but the Lord. In this colony of errors, everybody's saying something except the Almighty. Lord Jesus, the word is clear that God is with Joseph 
But I, I don't see where God speaks to Joseph. God never leaves him in his trouble, and God never explains to him why he's in trouble. God works through the trouble, but God never explains the trouble to Joseph. God is doing something, but God ain't saying nothing. There are times in my life, Jesus, there are times in my life, I need God to say something. I don't need a silent treatment. Preach. I don't need the sound treatment. I need to hear his voice. I don't always need the Lord to send a word. I need him to speak for himself. It's not enough to be where God is discussed. I want to be where God is discovered. Oh, Jesus. I don't need anybody to explain God. I need to encounter God. Sometimes I need the Lord to say something. Oh, Jesus. Yes, yes. When the demons are held in front of me, say something, Lord. When the thunder rolls and the lightning flashes, say something, Lord. When the news on TV is bad and the forecast is dreary, Lord, say something. When politicians don't know what to say and don't want to hear what nobody got to say, Lord, say something. Sometimes I just need a word from the Lord. Lord, but in the story of Joseph, God is present, but God is silent. Yes. He's hated by his brothers. Betrayed by his own, but God says nothing. When he's thrown in a pit and sold as a slave, God says nothing. When a woman lies on him because he won't lie with her, when a woman lies on him because he won't lie with her, God says nothing. Lord Jesus. When he's falsely accused, unjustly imprisoned, God says nothing. When he's wasted in jail, Forgotten by the butler, God says nothing. God is there, but God says nothing. Joseph goes through what God permits, yet God never speaks a word to Joseph. Lord Jesus, he never speaks a word to Joseph. God allows his trouble, and God never explains his trials. God never says, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. God never says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. God never says, I'll fight your battles if you just keep still. God never says, trouble don't last always. God permits the pain, and yet God says nothing in the time of trouble. Lord Jesus, God is right there saying nothing. God is right there, and he's saying nothing. Tell me, church, how can you make it when God is silent? Oh, Jesus, how can you make it when God gives you the silent truth? How can you hold out when everybody's talking but the Lord? How can you explain what you encounter when God's not talking to you? Let me clear my throat. You have to be careful who you're listening to. You have to be careful who you're listening to when you're not hearing from the Lord. It's not wise to listen to others. Lord Jesus, it's not wise to listen to others when you're not hearing from the Lord. Amen. Be careful who you talk to when God's not talking to you. See, when God doesn't speak for himself, there are some who feel they are qualified to speak for him. Yeah. Some folks use the silence of God as an excuse for them to speak. Don't come with a word from the Lord. They come with an interpretation of God's silence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, they try to make you think they try to make you think that a, that a silent God is an absent God. Mm, uh, if you're not hearing from heaven, they'll have you to think you've been turned over to hell. If God's not talking to you, they want you to think God is no longer with you. If they want you to think God is no longer with you, if God is not talking to you, somebody needs to say amen over here. God is no longer with you, but God is not talking. God not talking to you is not proof that God's not Amen. looking out for you. Amen. God's silence does not mean God's not present. Right. God's silence, silence is not an indication that God's not doing something. A silent God is not an active God. God doesn't have to make an announcement to do something awesome. God doesn't have to blow his horn to come to your rescue. God can deliver you without making a whole lot of drama. God being silent is no proof God's not active. God being silent is no sign that God's not being sensitive. Amen. God's not talking to you 
is no indication God's not with you. Sometimes when God's not talking to you, it's because he's too busy working for you. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness something here? I know he's working my life. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Sometimes when you can't hear from God, you just have to believe that you are seen Amen. by God. Even when he's not talking to you, believe he's looking out for you. Believe he's doing something when, you're, when he's not saying nothing. Believe he's working out his plan even when you can't hear his voice. Believe he's opening the door, opening a door when you don't hear a sound. If you can't hear him talking to you, believe he's working for you. Yes. I want God. I want God. I want God to trust me with his word. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Jesus. I want you to trust me with his word. Yes, yes. Even when he's late. Oh, 
Lord Jesus. The Lord can show up even when it looks like it's all over. He can make you the champ after you've been down for the count. He can give you the victory after you've lost the war. God can be sure and God can be slow. Lord Jesus. Amen. Let me tell you, we live in an age when everything is in a hurry. Amen. We want instant, we want instant Amazon, FedEx, and, yeah. and we want it in a hurry. Lord Jesus. And we want it yesterday. We want instant email and instant text. We want it right now because we eat instant stuffing. We want instant prayer. Let me clear my throat. You can't hurry God. You can't rush him and you can't push him. You can't force him to act and you can't make him move. Sometimes with God, all you can do is wait on him. Sometimes before you can see his power, you got to develop your patience. Before he will move, you have to be still and wait on him. You can't hurry God. Joseph will tell you, you have to wait on the Lord. You don't always need to escape trouble. Sometimes you need to endure trouble. You don't always need a way out. Sometimes you have to, you, have, you just need to hold on. Endure headache, heartache, and tribulation. Endure lonely nights, dark days, and tough, time, tough times. Endure till the Lord shows up. Endure pain, poverty, and sickness until the Lord shows up. Endure days of doubt, famine, and days filled with troubled waters. Endure days of hopelessness, helplessness, and emptiness. Endure sickness in your life and sorrow in your home. Don't worry about trouble, defeat, or demise. Don't fret about animosity, alienation, or abandonment. Just endure what you can't escape. Hear me now. God can be silent, slow, and strange. He has a plan, and he had an agenda, and he had a reason. Nothing was left to chance, and nothing was left to love. What happened was all aligned with what God had planned. God was moving and God was busy. Yet God was nowhere to be found. Lord Jesus. It amazes me. It amazes me how God used trouble to put a crown on Joseph. Lord Jesus. You have to remember the ways of God are not like the ways of us. God moves in a mysterious way. His wonders to perform. Lord Jesus. As Joseph looks back, he sees God is strange. He's able to look back over his life and see how the trouble that he endured, that God, that God was with him step for step and never left, never left his side. Joseph, Joseph's outlook towards God gave him new joy and a new understanding of God's power and mercy. Lord Jesus. He didn't let the bitterness and the pain in his life make him a prisoner of hate. Amen. Joseph has the right attitude. Joseph has the right perspective on what he endured. Let me tell you, if you can praise God where you're at, if you can praise God where you're at, you can praise God while you're going through. You can praise Him while you're going through. I'm a witness. I'm a witness. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Joseph was picked out and picked on and picked up. Joseph was chosen, chased, and crowned. Joseph was selected by the Lion of Judah, abused by his brothers, and delivered by the divine. You can't be picked out and not be picked on. God can't do something for you and life not do something to you. You can't have a blessing without a burden. There can't be a morning without a night. Sometimes God gets a fragrance from the thorn. Y'all are trying to hear this morning. God gets a fragrance from the thorn. Mm -mm -mm. Your breakdown can be your breakthrough. Sometimes what looks like punishment can be a promotion. Sometimes when others leave you, you find out God is with you. I've drawn closer to him because of those who left me. Every time I get into trouble for being faithful, I expect a mighty blessing. Yeah. Whenever I do right, it causes a problem. I expect a miracle. When I get knocked down for standing up for Jesus, I expect it for him to be right by my side. When I'm isolated from family and friends, Lord Jesus, I'm often caught up in the spirit. When my mother and my father forsake me, I encounter a divine presence. If it wasn't for trouble, God wouldn't have been able to set me free. I beg the question. I beg the question. What are you looking at? What direction is your life going in? How are you looking at your pain? 
How are you looking at your troubles? Look at it like Joseph did. Yes. Look at it like Joseph did. Right. He didn't let it bother him because he knew God was on his side. Yeah. Even when God said nothing. Yeah. Yeah. God, he, Joseph, was, I know he was scratching his head in the pit. Why am I here? How did this happen? All behind the dream. All behind the dream. The brothers, they hated him. They hated him. But nothing's going to stop me from walking with the Lord. I don't care. You can talk about me as much as you want behind my back. I'm going to walk with the Lord. If you don't want to give me that promotion at work, I'm going to walk with the Lord. And as my mama said, if God never does another thing, I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him.
We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word this morning. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord God, that you have saturated us with your word, oh, God. You let us know, Lord God, in your word that you would never leave us. You would never forsake us, oh, God. Even when we are silent, Lord God, we know that you are with us, oh, God. Oh, God, if you said in your word, if God is for us, who could be against us? So we thank you for your presence this morning, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for each and every one of us and those who are hearing my voice, oh God. Whatever they stand in need of, oh God. If they're broken, if they're feeling broken this morning, oh God, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would put them back together. You're the potter who puts us back together again, oh God. So I thank you, Lord God, for bringing us together. I thank you, Lord God, for your healing power. Say 